You never really know where inspiration is gonna come from. I was driving and listening to the radio. Now, my car is usually tuned to NPR, and Brian Lehrer was interviewing Dan Rather. Well, at the end of the interview, Dan Rather gives Brian a very nice compliment, and Brian expresses how honored he is to receive such a compliment from Dan Rather, and said he was gonna take the audio clip and build a trophy case for it. Well, this got me thinking, how would you physically display an audio clip? A sound is a waveform, right? It's, it's moving air. We can capture it in digital form, but how would you display it? In the old days when you used tape, I guess you could display the physical tape, but now it's captured in ones and zeros, and we store it in this mysterious package called an MP3. But sound is also expressed in waveform. What if we take the actual waveform and 3D print that? That way when someone says something nice about you, you can have it, you can hold it, and you can display it. Let's 3D print a sound wave. This video is brought to you by me. I made it. I also made something else for you. It's my free Fusion 360 Quick Start mini series, the fastest way for beginners to get up and running, making their own models with Fusion 360. Check it out with the link below. Okay, so we're gonna 3D print a sound wave. How do we go about that? First, we need our sound wave. No, first, we need someone to say something nice about me. Something worth 3D printing. I got it. There we go. That's Vlad. That's Vlad right there. So the dude is wicked smart. The dude is wicked smart. Now, there are several ways I can capture that sound wave. Most video editing software will also give you the sound wave of the audio clip. A free one is Audacity. Simply record the audio and it will give you the waveform. That was going to be my first approach, but I decided to keep things even simpler. My iPhone has a voice memo app that gives me the sound waveform. I'm sure there's something similar for Android. I'll press on record to get the audio clip. Go visit desktop makes. His channel is wonderful. The dude is wicked smart. And I mean, go to edit where it will show you the waveform and take a screenshot. I'll crop it to the section where Joel says the dude is wicked smart. Now I was debating importing the picture into Inkscape to do an image trace and convert the JPEG to a vector file. This would allow me to bring it into Fusion 360 and extrude it, but I decided to skip that step and instead I'll bring the photo into Fusion 360 directly to trace it. I really like the look of the waveform being represented by these vertical columns. I think it'll give the 3D print an extra little pop instead of printing it flat, especially if we print the base in a different color. My approach in Fusion 360 was straightforward. I brought the picture in as an attached canvas. I then scaled the picture to the size I wanted the 3D print to be. I created a sketch and made two rectangles and determined my distance between the two. I then used that distance to create a rectangular pattern of rectangles. Here's a pro tip. When you create a rectangular pattern, amending one object will affect all the other. For example, here, if I drag the height of one of the rectangles, all the other rectangles of the pattern change as well. If you don't want this relationship, simply click on the little rectangular pattern symbol and hit delete. It will keep all your patterns, but they are no longer linked so that you can amend each one individually. This is exactly what I did, and it allowed me to then go in and change the height of each rectangle to meet the height of the waveform columns on the picture by simply dragging the top edge of the rectangle. Next, I selected all the columns and extruded it out 10 millimeters to give it thickness. I mirrored it to give me the exact same shape on the bottom and then created a sketch to give it a base to stick to. By choosing join as my operation, all the different column bodies get joined into one body. I intend to print the waveform in orange PLA and the backing in black, so I'll go ahead and apply appearances to see how it will look before committing. I think it's gonna look really nice and the orange will really pop against the black background. All right, let's give it a shot. I sent this to my Prusa and I'm printing the base with Prusa's Galaxy Black PLA and Filamentum's Orange PLA. I'm going with a layer height of 0.3 millimeters and included a filament swap between the base and where the waveform starts. 
I really love the way this came out. It's a simple concept, but really powerful. The idea of holding a sound wave in your hand. I started thinking of grabbing the clips of really important historical speeches and 3D printing them. Just having a wall of inspirational quotes, but 3D printed in waveform. I mean, how cool would that be? I did do a quick online search and as is usually the case, I realized that my idea wasn't original. Etsy has a bunch of Soundwave art and Soundwave jewelry products, um, even rings with your own personal Soundwave recording. But hey, if you have a 3D printer, you can make your own. Now, if you enjoy creative 3D printed projects like this one, then make sure to hit that subscribe button because I've got a lot more where this came from. All right, now I've got to find the perfect place to go mount this.